Hey everybody, welcome. everybody, welcome to another episode of Earthly Headlines. Today we've got a really cool story. Um, it's got a nice mix of being ancient. It focuses on a really interesting group of people. Um, there's some interesting technology involved. And um, it's something that has been basically slipped under our radar and has been existing under our noses for a while. And this, what I'm talking about is this Viking ship that they found an, and a cemetery, a burial mound, basically, found next to this other mound that is de it's definitely related. And people have known about this mound. It's called Jelhaugen. So it's right here in Norway. And basically it's, or Jelestad, depending on uh, your preference. And it's in Norway. And basically what they found, let me pull up a photo here. So this is the actual mound here. So this is the, the Jellestead mound here. And I guess there was a king named Jell who lived at the time. And I think this was his mound, if I, if I recall correctly. And then this flat area here, this field, is the subject of um, what we're going to talk about today. So... Interestingly enough, what they did was, um, and they, when I say they, I mean, uh, let me give them credit, uh, the Norwegian Institute for Cultural Heritage Research, NIKU, they released this cool video, which uh, I'll put the link in my pro, uh, in the description below. They have this technology, it's basically this type of uh, ground penetrating radar that looks like a lawnmower, and what they do... Let me pull it up. Th this is the thing right here. So it has high resolution geo radar. And as you can see from this diagram, you can see these pulses here. And this is about, what, 10 feet, maybe 12 feet under, under the ground, under the surface of the ground. And they just drive over this land. And then it produces these pretty astonishing images. And here's what they, here's what they found. So they found five longhouses in this field and then there are a bunch of different grave mounds here these small mounds and then they found this ship right here this green thing here they found a ship here and this has been here forever and I guess there were legends and there were uh, rumors and and stories passed down by the locals uh, about this king named Jell and how he was uh, a very powerful ruler and he was very well respected in the area. I mean, as evidenced by a huge burial mound like this. I mean, this is a obvious display of power and wealth. Uh, if you're if you're looking at at this through the context of um, that through their cultural context at the time, and it, now it, all these legends they were just legends. Now they've been exonerated by uh, technology and and curiosity. Let's just get into this. They, it, it was initially discovered as an anomaly, and they found that the ship is about 66 feet long and buried only 1.6 feet beneath the ground. I mean, that's really shallow. That's if I think if this were located in America, I don't know about uh, people in Norway. Like, I don't know if they carry around metal detectors or whatnot, but in America people do that all the time i mean people i know and 1.6 feet is not that deep i'm pretty sure someone would have found it but anyway that's that's kind of a non sequitur the keel and floor timbers are intact but they don't know how much is preserved of the ship and they're kind of scared to um they're well, not scared but they're they're very reluctant to just have a full-blown excavation and pull this thing up because it, they don't know how fragile it is and it might just uh, destroy the whole thing um, and so that's why they don't know what the dates are. Um, but they're pr it's probably 1,500 years around there or so because that's when, I think that's when that king was living, uh, King Jell. Um, so the ship is part of a cemetery that has the remains of at least seven burial mounds, which are dome-shaped hills of dirt and stone piled on top of a grave, which is indicated by the scan. So let's go back to that photo. So these... Not just is it sand and earth, but there's stones uh, burying it as well. And here's what it looked like before the scan. So it, it's a very peculiar field, 
to say the least, right? I mean, there's a huge mound here, which is obviously something, some man-made thing. And then there's just some fallow field here. And I, I, I totally understand the curiosity, especially if there was local legends saying that there was probably a, um, some, something of significance next to the mound. And this is a reconstruction of how they might have done it. So th they construct this, this boat here, and then they just put layers of stone and earth over it. And I guess they, this is where the uh, maybe there's a body in there or something, or maybe even gold. But anyway, um, the remains of five longhouses where the Vikings would have lived were also detected near the cemetery. The, dis the newly discovered cemetery and longhouses are near a previously excavated burial mound called the Gel Mound, which is that big that big mound I, I was showing you guys here. This thing, and that dates back fifteen hundred thousand uh, fifteen hundred years. And according to a local story, it was built for a king named Jell. Um, here's a better overview. So he, there's basically the stuff in the yellow are the long houses, and this is the boat, and then the rest are uh, burial, bur smaller burial mounds, and this is the king's mound. Kind of reminds me of the pyramids. Cause, I mean, the pyramids weren't a burial mound, but some of the lesser ones were, I think. And... There were also boats buried around some of the pyramids as well, and I don't know. I don't know what's behind that burying ships along with the dead. Um, maybe one of you in the comments could enlighten me. I'm not schooled in that, but th there's some significance there. Uh, the ship burial does not exist in isolation, but forms part of a cemetery, which is clearly designed to display power and influence. Uh, this guy, uh, Lars G Gustafsson, he's an archaeologist with NIKU. Uh, this is incredibly exciting as we only know of three well-preserved Viking ship finds in Norway. So this is very rare. So this is, add this to the list. So there's four now. It can be, and here he brings up a good point. It can be investigated with all modern means of archaeology without actually excavating it. So I guess G, the this, um, and here's a better picture of this thing that looks like a, a, a lawnmower. Um, this thing uh, does not look that sophisticated, to be honest. I mean, it, it, I feel like I could drive it. It's really amazing. I, I mean, I'm not trying to be arrogant. I'm not trying to put down the technology or anything like that. I mean, this is huge. But I feel like they sh there's so many uses for this, too. They could be... Like, if I had this, I would just drive it everywhere just to see what's underneath. Although, I don't know how, m how much it costs to run this thing. I imagine it's expensive. And if it breaks, I don't know how much it would cost to repair it, but it, it seems like a, quite the piece of machinery, to be honest. So geophysical scans are one way. Eventually, they may need to excavate it. Okay, so they might need to. And I think that maybe they should, maybe not all of it, not a full-blown excavation, but just take some samples and see what they find. Who? What if they find... What if they find something crazy like uh, um, like something like the Voynich manuscript, something written in a different language, or may maybe they had some, maybe there's some evidence that they had contact with another civilization or something like that. Like who who knows what they could have been buried with? Now, if you were to go by all the other uh, burials that that are contemporaneous with this, maybe you'd expect to find some weapons, gold, armor. Um, I don't know, a, a clothing, some other uh, things of value. Uh, but maybe they'll find a book. Maybe they'll find some type of tablet or something. In order to, I guess, in order to run this thing, this technology, they need the okay of the city. And I guess it's a joint effort with the city, obviously, because this is, I'm, I'm guessing it belongs to the city, this, this land. I don't think it's public land, like a national park or anything like that. But... I don't know, this is a cool find, and and the possibilities are endless. I mean, they, yeah, they discovered it, but this is not, they're just not going to close the door on this and make it a UNESCO heritage site, and then that's it. They're going to they're gonna do some more analysis. This is just scratching the surface, so um, maybe we can get some more information out of this find. And this is a silhouette, or no, this is what the ship looks like under, under the ground right now. Um, that looks pretty cool. It looks like a compass or something. Uh, so 
Let me know what you guys think about about this find. Um, if you guys if you guys are from Norway, have you guys even been here? Um, tell me about this place, man. Um, if I were to visit Norway, I'd definitely come here if I had the time. It's in Ostfold County, Norway. Yeah, and I guess that's all I have to say about this, man. I mean, there's just so much stuff here that we could say, and and. It's interesting that it's located right on the border of uh, Sweden right here. And I know all this was complete. All the boundaries were not the same back then. And there was a lot going on 1,500 years ago. I mean, he's, he was a king. Jell was a king, but he was probably a local king. And I know that they were, it was pretty fragmented at that time. So let me know what you guys think. Um, I'm, I love reading your comments. I just went back to one of the videos that I posted a few day, uh, a few weeks ago, the um, the Neanderthal Denisovan video, and it's just full of comments, and I, I've I read all of them, and and uh, I'm looking forward to more. So uh, I guess that that should do it. Um, any comments, questions, concerns, complaints, keep to yourself. I'm just kidding. Um, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.